Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Explorer Classroom Hangout. My name is Joe Gorowski from National Geographic, and I will be your host for today. Really excited for today's virtual field trip. Not only do we have some awesome classrooms from across the United States joining us today, but we're also going to meet Kristen Lear in just a moment. Uh, and she's got an awesome lesson for us today about bats. But before we meet Kristen, I want to give a shout out to any of the classrooms who are starting to tune in live on YouTube right now. Don't forget, you can still get in on the action. We've got the chat sidebar on the right. Let us know where you're watching from, what grade you're in. And then, of course, send us in some questions, and I'll work them into the event and to any of the classrooms. Doesn't matter if you're watching live on camera with us right now or you're tuning in on YouTube. Take some pictures, share them on Twitter, uh, hashtag Explore Classroom, tag at Nagio Education, and also tag at Bats for Life, because then Kristen uh, will be able to see uh, some of those pictures as well. All right, that's enough for me for now. Let's get to the main event. So like I said, we're hanging out with Kristen Lear today. She's a bat conservationist and environmental educator. She got her start in bat conservation at the age of 12 when she built and installed bat houses for her Girl Scout Silver Award project. And since then, she's been pretty lucky being able to travel all around the world, United States, Australia, Mexico, learning how to protect endangered bats. And she likes to share uh, her passion for protecting bats with the public. So Kristen, it's so great to steal a little bit of your time today. It looks like a beautiful day uh, in Georgia. We're excited to get to know you and learn a little bit about the bats. Thank you so much. Can you all hear me? If you can hear me, put up your bat hand. Perfect. Yay. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Joe, for the introduction. Um, I'm very, very excited to be here. Um, bat conservation in, is my passion. So to be here today is a real honor to share with you my journey through um, becoming a bat conservationist and also sharing how you can become involved in bat conservation now, even um, at your age, like I did. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, we do have a question and answer session at the end. Um, so if you have any questions, just jot them down and then um, keep them in your, your brain and then we'll have the question answer session at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Okay, can you all see that? All right, looks like it's loading up. There you go. Can you all see that? Perfect. Full screen. Looks Perfect. good. Awesome. Um, is that little bar on the way at the bottom or no? Oh, no. No worries. Perfect. So, yeah, like I said, my name is Kristen Lear, um, and I am a bat conservationist and National Geographic Explorer. So um, I will be talking a bit about my journey through science, um, becoming a bat conservationist, some cool things about bats, and then how you can help bats yourself. Um, so as a bat conservationist, I work to protect bat species around the world. Um, and I've been lucky enough to work with some really neat bats um, throughout different parts of the world. So US, um, Australia, and now I work in Mexico. So um, I think bats are really cute. And these are just some of the really cool bats that I've gotten to work with over the years. But my journey didn't start just in university or in college. It actually started much earlier than that. So um, this is me when I was a toddler playing on the beach. Um, I loved getting my hands dirty. I loved being outside, exploring, um, picking up things like in this picture, trying to figure out how the world works and, and what kind of animals and creatures I could find. Um, so this was kind of my growing up, my passion. But growing up, I was also in Girl Scouts. So I went through Girl Scouts all the way from kindergarten through high school. Uh, continued in college and I'm still a Girl Scout member and leader now. And part of what I loved doing as a Girl Scout was going on night hikes. Um, so when we would go uh, camping, we would go on night hikes where we'd, we'd wander around the forest in the middle of the night with our leaders, of course. Um, but we'd listen for all the things we could hear. Uh, we'd see owls flying. We'd see spider eyes with our flashlights. Um, but my favorite part of the night hikes were hearing the bats flying around. You could hear their, their little echolocation calls sometimes. Um, you could see them zipping around and flying, hunting their insect prey. And so that, those night hikes were what really got me interested in bats um, because I think they're really, really cool. 
And so in sixth grade, like Joe mentioned, I built and put up bat houses in a local park in my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so this is me with one of the bat houses and my dad and my grandpa and my mom um, who all helped me. And this was my first foray into um, being a bat conservationist, even at this really young age. Um, I always rooted for the underdog. I don't know if anyone is like me like that, where you, you want things that other people don't like, um, you want to support them. So things like spiders and snakes and bats that a lot of people um, don't understand or are afraid of when they shouldn't be. And so that's why uh, in sixth grade, I wanted to help bats. And so I learned through my project and I continued learning about bats, I learned that there's a huge diversity of bat species or types of bats around the world. Um, these are just some of the, the really cool bats that I think are really neat looking. Um, and I learned that bats, there are now 1,406 species. So over a thousand species of bats around the world. And they make up 20% of all mammal species. So every one in every five mammals is a bat. So if, if five of you sitting there were a mammal, were mammals, one of you would be a bat. Um, so they're really, they're really important. They're found everywhere um, except Antarctica. Um, and I learned that bats are mammals. So bats are mammals just like horses, dogs, squirrels, cats, um, and even us, we're, we're mammals too. And I learned something really cool that bats actually have the same bones in their arms and in their hand as we do. So you can see the top human um, arm and hand and then the bottom is the bat hand and arm and you can see it actually has the exact same bones. And if you see those really long yellow bones, those are its fingers. So basically bats fly with their fingers and their hands. So I think jazz hands is what I think of and they're really cool. They fly with their really long fingers. And like I said, they're found everywhere on the world except Antarctica. So you can find bats in your own backyard. I'm sure you've seen bats in your own backyard. And I also learned that bats are really, really important uh, for both the environment and for us. So bats um, help disperse seeds, which means when they, some bats eat fruit, like the one in the top left. Um, and when they eat fruit, they spit out or they poop out the seeds of the plants. And then those seeds then grow into a, a new plant. So bats are really important for helping regrow tropical rainforests and many other um, areas around the world. Uh, bats also pollinate, they're very important pollinators. So like butterflies and moths and hummingbirds, bats are also pollinators. So they pollinate things like mango plants and bananas, um, agaves, things that we eat. So without bats, we wouldn't have mangoes or chocolate. We wouldn't have any of that stuff. And then also bats eat a lot of insects. So there are many, uh, most of the uh, bat species eat insects, like this moth here, you can see it's chasing. Um, and when they eat these insects, they eat a lot of pest insects. So things that, insects that eat our agricultural crops, um, for example, or mosquitoes that bother us. So those bats are eating those pest insects and helping control those insect populations. So without bats, we'd have a lot more mosquitoes and other nasty insects that we really don't want around. But unfortunately, um, bats are under threat around the world. So a lot of bat species are losing their habitat. Um, people, you know, we're cutting down trees to make new developments or to make farm fields. Um, so they're losing their, their habitat. Uh, people also will go out and kill bats because, you know, a lot of people don't understand bats and so they think that, that they're bad and should kill them, but they really shouldn't. Um, and also there's a, some diseases that are um, affecting bats. So um, there, there's one really bad disease here in the U.S. called white nose syndrome, which has killed a lot of bats and it's really, really sad for the bat populations. So because of all these these issues and these threats to bats, I'm working to, as a bat conservationist, to help protect bats around the world. Um, and it's my passion, so it's something I love, love doing. And I've gotten to see some really cool things and do some really neat things as a bat conservationist. Um, so I get to go out and catch bats. Um, this is again for study, so we don't just go out and catch bats for fun. We study them, we, we see how their populations are doing. 
Um, so I got to actually hold and see some really cool bats to study them. Um, I get to go in some really big caves um, to find bats that are roosting in caves. So I get to, to explore some neat caves. I get to crawl around really tight spaces in caves, um, which is one of my favorite parts of being a bat conservationist. Um, I also have gotten to go inside caves where there's thousands and thousands of bats and actually walk up giant mounds and piles of guano, which is bat poop. Um, again, to study the bats, but it's, uh, it's quite a fun experience. I've also gotten to see millions of bats. This is in Bracken Cave in Texas, um, where there's about 15 million Mexican free-tail bats coming out of this cave. Um, so I've gotten to see them up close. And I get to stay up all night sometimes <clears throat> as a bat conservationist because bats are out at night, so I have to stay out at night too to study them. But again, I want to really stress that you don't have to go to school necessarily to, to be a bat conservationist and to help bats. I got my, my start you know, in sixth grade at 12 years old. Um, so it's never too early to start helping bats. So now I just wanna talk a little bit about um, some ways to help bats. Um, and then I have some bat houses here that you can actually see and we'll go visit. So you can help bats too. Um, I think one of the easiest ways any, any of you and all of us can help bats is to tell your friends and family how neat bats are and how important they are for the environment and for people. Um, this is a really easy thing to do. Just talk to your parent, tell them, oh, I learned about bats and they're, they're really neat. Um, talk to your friends and kind of spread the word about bats. Um, you can also work either in your class or with your family to plant a bat garden in your yard or your school. Um, so this is a really neat thing to do where um, if you plant flowers that bloom at night, those flowers will then attract the bats that feed on the insects that are feeding on the plants. Um, so it's like its own little ecosystem and it's a really um, neat way to help bats in your own backyard. You can also adopt a bat from a bat organization. So you won't actually you know, adopt, you won't actually get a bat. But what you do with these programs like Bat Conservation International or Bat World Sanctuary, um, you sponsor a bat, um, you donate a little, um, some money, and then you get information about the bat species that you're helping. And in the case of Bat World Sanctuary, you actually learn about the individual bat that they're rehabilitating or taking care of. Um, in their sanctuary. And so this is a cool class project. I did something like this with um, puffins when I was in second grade. So it's a, a fun thing to do to help bats. And then also you can put up a bat house. Um, so these are two bat houses you can see, two different types of bat houses. And what you do when you, you build a bat house, and I'll show you in a little bit, um, you, you build it and you put it up and then the bats will come and they'll live in the bat house. So um, this is a photo of a local Girl Scout troop here in Athens, Georgia, where I live. Um, and I helped them build bat houses to put up in a local park. And it was a really easy thing to do. They really enjoyed it. And then we got to put it up and they helped us install these bat houses. And this is actually where we are today to actually get to see them. Um, this is a kindergarten class with one of my friends from uh, Cincinnati and she and her class also built several different bat houses and put them up on the wall of their school as a class project. So again, it's a really fun way to help bats. And as a bat scientist, I get to actually use some really cool equipment, um, which I'll show you in a minute, to study the bats in the bat houses. So these are some pictures of um, a, an infrared camera which is basically a way to see in the dark. It's a, it's a light that um, comes out of the camera and we can't see it. The bats can't see the light, but the camera can see that light. And then we can watch the bats in the dark. So this is a video of the bats coming out of the bat houses in the evening. And you can see them, there's, there's probably several hundred bats in these bat houses. And we love having them around because they're eating, I'll play that again, we're eat, they're eating the pest insects like mosquitoes in our backyards. So we really like having these bats around. And then 
this is, so using those infrared cameras that I just mentioned, this is watching them come out of the bat house in slow motion. You can see they just drop out of the bat house and then fly off. And they kind of jump out. Pretty cool. And then this is a thermal imaging video. So this is uh, basically the, the heat signature of the bat. So it's, it's seeing the heat of the bat. You can see them coming back into the bat houses in the morning. So they, they latch onto the, the bottom of the bat house and they crawl up in to, in to the inside. And then they sleep there during the day. I'll play that one more time. So you can see it landing and then crawling up. So with this cool equipment, we can actually see these bats in action. And we also can see inside the bat houses. So this is some pictures of us using a scope on a big pole where we uh, use a camera on the end and we can actually see in, into the bat houses during the day. So can you all see those little, the little bats up there? So those are two little bats that are roosting inside these bat houses and they're cuddled up real real snug because they actually like to live together in in, uh, in groups. And then this is a video of them in the inside the bat house during the day. So you can see they're cuddled up together. Um, they're they basically sleep throughout the day and they socialize, they groom each other. So they're they're really cool to watch. I'll play it again. They're kind of just chilling out. And before I show you the bat houses we have here, um, I just want to say feel free to email me um, about with any questions about bat houses or how to how to build them and put them up. Um, I do a lot of um, consulting kind of with with classes, so feel free to email me if you have any questions about bats or how to how to help them. So now let's go see some real bat houses. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then we're going to take a little walk um, to see the bat houses here. Okay, let's see. see if I can stop sharing. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Trying to figure out how to stop sharing. There should be a little button up there that should Not say yet, stop the screen share. Gotcha. There you go. Ah, you're back. Better Perfect. now? Okay. Yep. So let's take a little walk. Okay, so I'm going to show you, we're in a park, so this is a park in Athens, Georgia, where I live and work, and can you see the bat house right there? There it is. So I'll take you over and we can actually see what they look like up close. Can you all see that up there? Yeah, so that's one of the bat houses, and it's actually really tall. I'll go stand right next to it so you can actually see how high up it is because bats like it up really high. So there's the pole, and there's the bat houses. And there's actually six bats in there right now. So they're, they're sleeping in there. And that video that I showed you of the bats inside the bat house, it's those same six bats. So they're, they're in there. And then this real quick, I'll show you the equipment. So this is the equipment that we use to monitor the bats. So um, this is that infrared camera that I talked about. And then this is the infrared lamp. So this is the light, the infrared light to actually watch the bats come out. And then real quick before we have a uh, question time, I want to show you so you see what they look like. So this is a bat house. This is one of the ones that's up there that we just saw, um, but it has a cutout so you can see the, uh, the inside. So basically what what is inside is they're called chambers. They're basically different rooms of the bat house. And the bats land. So the bats will land here and then crawl up in there to sleep during the day. And so this is a really easy thing to build. Um, this is what the Girl Scouts helped build. Um, <clears throat> and so it's a really easy thing to do. And then you can paint it any color you want. Um, you can paint a picture on it, you can paint bats on it, or a cool color, like a blue color. Um, so there's a lot of really neat things you can do with bat houses. And then finally, one last thing. 
excuse me, <clears throat> before I go, I want to show, this is a specimen of a bat that we might find in these bat houses. And actually this is the one that's up there right now. So this is a museum specimen, so it's not alive anymore, but this is a big brown bat. And you can see that it's not very big. It's only about the size of your palm. Can you all see that? Yeah. So you can see its wings are really thin wings. Um, these are their, this is their arm right here and their wing and their little ears because they have really good ears. They, they're not blind, they all have eyes, um, but they also have ears that they use to hear their echolocation with. And yeah, they're just really, really small. All the ones we have here in the US are pretty small. Um, and you can see the little tail down here. I'll show you the tail. So that's its little tail. So yeah, that's, um, that's kind of the world of bats in a nutshell. Um, and I wanna open it up to questions because I'm sure there are lots of questions if y'all wanna put on your microphone. So thank you. All right, Kristen, that was perfect. Thank you so much. So. I am going to take a minute and we're going to kind of move through the classrooms. We'll introduce them and each give them a chance to ask some questions. I also want to give a quick shout out um, to some of the classrooms who I know are tuning in on YouTube. They've already sent in some messages via YouTube. So I want to give a shout out to Mrs. Fusco's class. They're joining us today in Algonquin, Illinois. And then I want to give a shout out. We've got another group who uh, just said hi from Maine. So another group who's watching us in Maine. Uh, put those questions in and I will make sure that we work some of them in. Yep. And then Kristen, I'm probably going to keep you a little longer after the call to ask for some advice. I just built a bad house from a kit that was yes. sent to me. I'm going to ask you for some advice after the call on Absolutely. my new bad. Yeah. And if any of right. you want advice, feel free to email. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get going. Let's meet some of our classrooms. Cool. Let's see. Let's get started. Let's go to see some fourth graders in Glenview, Illinois, hanging out with Miss Michael. Let me get their microphone turned on. How are we doing, fourth graders? Hi, I've got. Hello, everybody, wave. Okay, I've got Allie coming up with a question. Allie, come on up. <clears throat> That's it. There you go. Perfect. Hi, Allie. Um, how do bats speak to each other? Ooh, great question. How do bats speak to each other? So they actually have their own uh, vocations. Um, so that kind of sounds like a uh, chatter, like, and that's how they talk to each other. Um, and it might not sound like words or anything to us, but they, they understand it. Um, so they have social calls um, and that's, that's how they talk to each other. Yep. Great question. All right, Kristen, before we jump to the next class, mm -hmm. do you want to try and just shift back to the bench you were to start? It seemed like the signal is a little bit stronger there. Yeah, sounds good. Perfect. All right, let's meet another classroom. Um, let's see. Let's go to Mrs. Ed Rosny's group. They're hanging out with us in Bristol, Connecticut. Looks like some third graders. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing, Bristol? Uh-oh, Ms. Rosny, I might need you to try and turn that mic on for me. It's not cooperating on my end right now. Oh. There we go, let's try that again. How are we doing, grade threes? So, does this, like, the camera stick scare the bats? Oh yeah, yes, it can. Um, so that's why with the camera stick, cause we're basically sticking it up into the bat house. Um, so we try to be really quick because it is kind of invading their, their space. So yeah, they don't like it. So we try to be only a few seconds and then come back out. Yeah, cause we don't want to disturb them too much. Yep. All right, good question. Mm -hmm. um, more questions coming in from online. I want to give a shout out to a few more classrooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mrs. Sazima's group is joining us from Hutchinson, Kansas. We've got another group joining us in Fort Worth, Texas. Make sure I don't miss anybody. Okay. And then a question coming in from online. Uh, our class in Texas is wondering, is there a species of bat that's the most common in the U.S. or in particular in Kansas? 
Oh, good, good question. In Kansas. So my husband's actually from Kansas in Okito, Kansas. Um, so near and dear to my heart. Um, but so one of the most common species across a lot of the U.S. is the big brown bat, which is the one I showed you. Um, they're very common uh, near people too, like in buildings or, you know, in parks, you'll see them. And so, yeah, that's one of the more common ones um, that you'll see. Also, the eastern red bat or the western red bat um, are two really common bats that you'll also see flying around during the evening. So keep an eye out for those two. All right, awesome. Uh, good questions. Good, good questions from online. I'm going to work another one in in just a moment, but let's go to Mr. Bresden's class. They're in Sherwood Park, Alberta. So they're joining us from Canada. Let's get their microphone turned on. There it is. How are we doing, Alberta? Good. <laughs> My name is Carter. Um, do you need to like keep the bat houses insulated? Oh, that's a great question, right? Because because we keep our houses insulated, right? Um, actually, not really. Um, in most places in the U.S. and Canada, all you need to do is build it with the the wood, and then put it in a really sunny spot. Um, so they recommend about six hours of sunlight every day, and that sunlight will heat up the bat house enough. So you actually don't really need a lot, any insulation. If you're far north, you know, in, in Canada where it's a lot colder, um, you might need to use different material that is more insulating. But in general, the regular wood and lots of sunlight will work fine. Yeah, that's a great question. All right, really good question. They're thinking over there in Alberta. Yeah, no, they are. <laughs> All right, so I want to give a shout out. We've got a fourth grade class joining us in Noblesville, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Indiana, um, with Mrs. Ads, but their microphone isn't cooperating. So, boys and girls, if you want to give a big wave at the camera, because we know that you're there and we know that you're watching, Hi. there they are. Uh, and then type your question in, um, because <laughs> we want to make sure that we get. Uh, at least one question in from your class. But there is a second class that's tuning in from that same school mm -hmm. with Mrs. Howerton, some fourth graders in Indiana, and their microphone is working. So I'm going to turn it on. Um, at least I think I'm going to the micro. Oh, there we go. Um, all right, Mrs. Howerton, how is your class doing? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Try this one. Nope. Uh, interesting. Mrs. Howerton's class, give us a big wave if you can hear me. Oh, I see a um, question in the yeah, chat. They're, yeah, they're waving. Mrs. Howerton's class, can you hear me now? Yeah. Oh, all right, we are ready for a question. Yep. Uh, why do bats like to sleep close to each other? Oh, why do bats like to sleep close to each other? Well, a lot of it is for warmth um, because they like to be really warm. And so they like the body heat from other bats. But also a lot of bats are, are very social. So they live in uh, family groups or in very social groups with their friends or relatives. And so they like to be close to them. So like living with your family, living with your parents, you like to be close to them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a way to stay warm and also to help with the being social, just like us. Yep. All right, good question. And then the other class in, sent us a question and they're wondering when you put the camera in, do the bats kind of shy away or have any of them ever kind of attacked the camera? Oh yeah. Um, so when I put the camera up in the bat house, um, they usually kind of shy away um, at that, that video that I showed of them in the bat house. The one was actually starting to move away from the camera. Um, and so that's why I stopped the video and, and took the camera out. Um, I've never ever had a bat attack um, anything, me or anything. They actually don't, they don't attack people. Um, you might have bats kind of swooping close to you, um, but that's either for two reasons. One is because they're really curious uh, so they're, they're like cats or dogs. They, they are curious and want to see who you are. So they're just kind of checking you out.
But also, if you think about it, there's also a lot of mosquitoes around you at night or gnats, little bugs kind of bothering you. So the bats are actually trying to swoop down and catch those insects. So if it looks like they're attacking you, they're not. They're just probably trying to catch insects. Yep. All right. Awesome. Question. Mrs. Reed's class, fifth graders hanging out with us in Huntley, Illinois. Let's get their awesome. microphone turned on. How are we doing, Illinois? Good. Hi. Hi. Hi, so I have a question. Yep. Do bats, or how long is the average bat's lifespan? Oh, great question. I'm really glad somebody asked that. So how long do you think you, uh, a bat might live if it's like that big? Uh, three to five years. Three to five years. That's a great guess because rodents, you know, mice, rats, live about two to three, four years. Um, but bats are actually not rodents. So they're their own separate group of animals. And the longest bat that has ever been recorded was a small bat about that big. And it lived at least 41 years. Wow. Yeah, so um, we don't really quite understand why they can live so long. Um, but there's actually a lot of research going into why they live so long without getting sick. And um, we're actually, people are studying them to learn how to maybe make medicine to help us live longer. Um, so there, yeah, it's a really fascinating thing. And that's a really great question. Yes. All right, very cool. Yet another reason why we should be protecting bats and exactly. learning more about them. Yep. Very cool. Uh, Mrs. Palmentier's class hanging out with us in Raleigh, North Carolina. Looks like some eighth graders. Let's get that microphone turned on. How are we doing eighth graders? Hey, how are you guys? We got a question. I'm kind of here. Oh, can you hear it now? There we go. Yep. All right. <laughs> uh oh, I'm not hearing anything. All right, who's up? Does someone have a question? Yeah, hang on. He, the uh, one person didn't want to come over to the screen. Okay. Um, all right. So, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. What classes did you have to take in high school or college to get to your profession? And did you have to volunteer places to get to where you are? Yeah, so in, in high school, I took, I loved biology. You know, that was my favorite, um, my favorite class. I also loved art class, even though I'm bad at art, but I really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, to get into my field, definitely biology, um, chemistry. Chemistry is not my favorite, but I had to take it to get to where I am. Um, and yeah, so kind of the life sciences. Um, so yeah, figure out what you are interested in and what classes would help you with that. Um, <clears throat> I think volunteering, I did volunteer at a, the zoo in Cincinnati um, when I was in high school. So I started doing that. Um, and then in college, I actually got to volunteer and work with uh, a PhD student who was working on bats and bat research. So that's how I fell in love with bat research. Um, so yeah, just finding new opportunities is always great. <clears throat> but yeah, getting, it's never too early to get started. And if anyone, if you have questions um, about any of that kind of how to get involved, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm always um, love talking to people about this. Yeah. All right, awesome question. Yeah. We're gonna grab another question from online. So our group in Algonquin, uh, Mrs. Fusco's class, I'm going to throw a two-parter at you. Uh, okay. Kristen, we've got, um, what is your favorite type of bat? And the second part is how big can bats get? Ooh. Oh, that first question is always so hard. Um, my favorite bat. I mean, I love the bats that I work with right now, the Mexican long-nosed bat, um, because they are, they have really kind of long noses and they eat a lot of nectar. And I love sugar. I'm, I have a big sweet tooth. So I really kind of relate with those bats because they, they eat only nectar for the most part. Um, and they're also pretty clumsy bats um, from what I've seen. When they, they land on a flower to eat the nectar, they kind of just like land on it and they're not very graceful. Um, and I am kind of clumsy too. So I kind of relate with them. Um, so yeah, the Mexican long-nosed bat probably right now is my favorite. Um, and how big does a big a bat get? Um, well, the largest bat in the world is one of the flying fox species in Asia, and they have a wingspan of about six feet. So 
So that's probably taller than your teacher and probably most of you. Um, so six feet wingspan from tip to tip, but they only weigh about two pounds. Um, so they they don't weigh hardly anything. And all of that kind of mass is in their wing and it's just a really thin wing. Um, and, and those bats, those big bats eat fruit. They're fruit eaters. So they're just giant fruit eaters, <laughs> pretty cute. All right, very cool. I lived in Australia for a year and I used to like to go down to Sydney Harbor to the park. Yes. And the trees were full of flying foxes. They're really amazing. Cool. They, they look like, they call them sky puppies because they look like puppies and they fly in the sky. Yep. All right, well, let's swing through a few more of our classrooms for some follow up. So Mrs. Michael's class, if you guys have another question, your microphone is on. Owen, come on up. Okay, I have Owen coming up with a question. Here you go, Owen. I don't know if we'll have any more, quite any more chances. Okay, Owen, perfect. Hi, Owen. Hi, are bat bones strong? Ooh, are bat bones strong? They are. Um, because they have to flap and, and carry the bat, but they're also very thin. Um, and so when we handle the little bats, like I showed you, it, it can be kind of easy to break them, to break the wing bone. Um, so we have to handle them very gently. Um, so yes, they're strong, but they're also very thin. Yeah. That's a All great right. Question. Back to Canada. Let's go to Alberta. Mr. Bresden's class. Do you guys have another question? I'll have to get you to turn on the mic for me. Some of the mics are being tricky today. <laughs> My question is how you tell how old they are. Ooh, how you tell how old they are. So it's, it's really kind of hard and um, you can really only tell a, a juvenile or like a young teenage bat versus an adult bat. And the way you do that is you shine a light through their knuckle bones um, and you can see if the, um, if the knuckle is a solid bone then it's an adult. And if you can see through the knuckle bone a little bit, then it's a juvenile or a teenager. Um, but the way that they told the, the 41 year old bat that I mentioned um, is somebody had banded the bat, which means they put a tag on it that had a number. And then 41 years later, another bat researcher caught that bat and read the tag, the number on the tag, and could tell that it was caught 41 years before. So yeah, so basically you can really only tell if it's been tagged the actual number of years. Yeah, great question. All right, great question. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Reed's class, your microphone's on again if you guys have another question. Mm -hmm. um, my question is what type of, what types of flowers and fruits do bats like? Ooh, what types of what types or species of bats that eat uh, nectar and fruit? But um, some of their, like, I guess, favorite fruits would be like things like mangoes um, that are really juicy, uh, bananas that are kind of soft and easy to eat. Because what the bats will do is they'll, they'll take the fruit and they'll smash it up in their mouth and then they'll, they'll suck out the juice and then spit out the rest of the pulp. So they like really soft kind of fruits like mangoes. Um, and flowers, they like flowers that have a lot of nectar um, and that are easy to get into. So agave flowers or cactus flowers, if you've ever seen the big uh, like columna or sa saguaros cactus um, that has the big open white flowers, the bats will just dive in there and, and eat the nectar. Yep. Great question. All right. Let's yep. take another trip to Ms. Howerton's class. Your microphone's on again if you guys have another question. Mm -hmm. Colton, go close to the iPad, please. What is the smallest type of bat? Ooh, it's the smallest type. So we went from the biggest, which is six foot wingspan. The smallest is called a bumblebee bat because it's about the size of your thumb tip. So if you look at your thumb and the tip of your thumb, that's how big the smallest bat is. And it weighs less than a penny. So it's a very, very small bat. Um, and they're also found out in, in Asia in that way. It's called the bumblebee bat. Great question. All right. Good question. We're going to steal one more from online. We've got a group in Texas wondering how high should you put about a bat house? Ooh, how high? So yeah, so they, they recommend about at least 12 feet from the bottom of the bat house off the ground. Um, but the higher, the better, really. Um, that's why we have them on 21 foot poles and you can see, um, you know, how, how tall it is. 
um, because they want it to be really high because the bats, when they come out of the bat house, they swoop down and then fly off. So if, you, if it's really close to the ground, they'll swoop and kind of hit the ground. So the higher, the better in general, but at least 12 feet from the bottom of the ground. All right. Well, Kristen, I want to give a huge shout out to our classrooms today. They yeah. did, they were awesome. Great questions yeah. uh, from all of our classrooms. So great to have you guys joining in. And I have a feeling you're going to get a few messages afterwards about Yeah, that. I, I love talking to people, so feel free. Yep. Perfect. Very cool. So I do want to remind uh, the classrooms again, if you were tuning in, share some of those pictures uh, via YouTube. We'd love to see, or sorry, via Twitter. We'd love to see classrooms in action. Uh, like Kristen said, she shared her email. You can also find her on Twitter at, at bats for life. So you can tweet to her uh, there. And then a quick shout out for our next event, August, or sorry, uh, September 18th, we'll be at Augustina Basada at 10 a.m. Eastern. We'll be talking ocean plastic. So join us and explore a classroom for that one. And Kristen, thank you so much for today. That was lots yeah. of fun. Uh, lots you. of great material you shared with us. And uh, yeah, I think uh, there might be some classroom projects as well, building bat houses for the new year. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Keep me posted. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to unmute all the microphones, boys and girls. So I think we should get a nice loud goodbye and thank you, but also bats up as well. Yeah, uh, thank you all. For today. So here we go. Thank microphones you. are coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Have a good day. All right. Once again, thanks everyone for hanging out, and yep. we will see you next time.